you know. Hi everybody, happy Saturday. Oh, it's a grey old day out there today. It's cold, isn't it? I actually considered putting the heating on earlier. Like proper chilly out there. So uh, uh, hopefully you're all uh, having a nice relaxing day. Or is it like catch up with housework day today? So I've uh, been over the shop, did did a few orders. Um, there's not many left on the raffle. I think there's only two left on the raffle now. So um, hopefully those will be gone and we'll be able to draw that Monday. Um, we've had a couple of people book onto the Zoom class as well, which is lovely. There are still a couple of spaces available. Um, you would need to book by Tuesday so that I can get the kit out to you in time, okay? So if you are, if you do fancy to having a go at that, um, please do go on in, uh, book that quite quickly, and then uh, we'll, I'll, I'll give you a call and we can sort, sort out what colours you want in the kit. So, who's there today? Who's coming um, online? We've got Christine, we've got Anne, Kate, Fab, and Sonia. Sean's just joined us as well. Hi, Sean. Hi, and everybody. Linda. Hi. Lovely. Um, do you want to put that little light on, Drew? I've just realised I've not put it on. That might help, actually, when we're cutting out in a minute. Um, thank you all as well for your suggestions, your charity suggestions. Um, we've decided we will just, we're going to put them all in a hat and draw them out because there are so many worthwhile causes there that um, I, I don't want to have to pick two. I want, we're going to do it by random because <laughs> uh, every, every time somebody came up with a suggestion, I was like, oh, that's a, oh, that's a nice idea. Oh, yeah, that one's a nice idea oh i like that one yeah so <laughs> far too many wonderful suggestions um so we're gonna we're gonna do it from a hat okay and we will pick pick from a hat okay so thank you for doing that guys um you can if you haven't put your nomination in yet you can still do that there is a post on facebook um and then yeah sean has been working hard on on sorting all the bits out so uh we will um we'll be announcing exactly what we're doing in the next few days um so what do we do we're doing oh, see my brain's not quite there today didn't have a very good night's sleep I really didn't you know my silly insomnia this wasn't good last night I was awake and asleep and awake and asleep really my brain's a bit fuzzy today not my normal on it self so you're gonna be gentle with me today <laughs> it is and gents okay um we're gonna do some reverse applique today um and I'm gonna show you two different methods um which um we they're both called reverse applique. They're used for different things. One, um, oh, it's just not my cup of tea. We can't love all techniques, can we? But I'm going to show you how to do it. Some people love it, absolutely. Uh, and then the other one is one that we've done. Uh, I don't know if we've done it on the 1 p.m. lives, but we've certainly done it in classes. So I'm going to show you them. So the first one is this, where we use like a satin stitch. Okay. Um, can you? See, hopefully you can see this, where... Um, the fab this blue fabric is actually sat behind okay it's actually on the back of this which is why it's reverse applique so I'm going to show you this and I actually used um, the cat um, template from our applique templates quite a lot of our applique templates um, you could use for this it would work really well as long as you've got that nice sort of graphic bit some of them wouldn't because the, you've got extra pieces in them. You, you could work them out once you've done it, but um, quite a lot of them would, would work for this technique. Um, it's a bit fiddly and it's not my favourite, but I'm going to show it you because some people love it. Okay. And the other one is the technique we used for the um, pie crust cushions that we did. Remember this? I don't know if you saw it on Hachanda, if any of you uh, joined us on that show. Um, that's how we get this lovely heart, this lovely neat edge here. So I'm going to show you both techniques, okay? Um, hopefully you can see that, guys. Um, um, I'll show you this one as well, actually, just, just so you can see. So it's the same. It's a heart. It doesn't have to be a heart. It can be any shape at all. You, can, you know, whatever shape at all. You could actually do the cat if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do both techniques, okay? So we're going to start with this one, okay? I'm going to do this one first. So I'm just going to sorry, just get all my bits out of the way that I need for the next one. So I went through our applique templates um, and like you can see, I chose, uh, where's the cat? Where is he? You could use the dog. Where's the cat gone? There you go. So I use my, use the cat's applique template for this one. Okay. And so I thought I'd do one of the others, the, the little demo. Okay. But so you could use most of these for this technique. I'm looking for the dinosaur now. Where's my dinosaur gone? I'm going to do the dinosaur. Okay, I'm going to do him. So the first thing we want to do is, okay, 
we do you remember these are all our applique templates are on the website okay there's um i'm sure i've shown you them before lots and lots of different designs i am in the process of drawing more as well you know in all the time all the spare time that i've got <laughs> okay i have cut myself a square background fabric um actually just before i start who's there anybody got any questions everybody okay and then i'll get going <laughs> linda pin says she loves the cat fabric ah oh, thanks uh linda tomlinson says hello hey, good morning everyone hi um, hi linda hi both lindas <laughs> suzanne says love this template she says hi as well hi Susie. and ah. yeah everyone says hi cool Cool. Just remember, throw out any questions if you want to, okay? Um, so I'm going to use the dinosaur. I've got this really funky piece of dinosaur fabric, which I'm going to use as my applique bit, um, and I've interfaced it. You do want to interface it where possible. It will help, okay? So I've just interfaced a piece of um, fabric, and that's going to sit behind this background piece, but I'll show you that in a second. And I've cut myself out a square of background fabric. It can be any any colour you want. I just happen to have some of these white scraps. I'm trying to go through my boxes, through my stash and use up some of the random bits that are in there. Um, so I've cut myself a square out. I then want to draw out on here, okay, like this. So I'm just going to centre up. Hopefully you can see this. Now I could use a light box, but because I'm using white fabric, um, I can actually see the template through. So I'm just going to draw out my dinosaur shape okay so I'm using a Frixon pen but you're going to cover all this up so it could just be a pencil could be a washable marker anything at all just if you're um if you wanted to use a dark background I would use freezer paper and I would draw this shape out onto freezer paper and then gently iron it onto the top of this fabric and draw around it and peel it off okay but because I'm using a pale fabric I can get away with doing doing it through okay and hopefully you guys can see this you could like I said you could use a light box if you wanted to but all I'm doing is transferring that shape you could you could freehand a shape if you wanted to you know if you're if you're a bit handy with a uh, with drawing you could freehand a shape if you wanted to and Karen is asked does the dinosaur have a set name does the dinosaur set have a name um it this is part of set a if you look on our website, our applique templates, um, hope, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think all of the templates on our website, it shows you what's in each book. You get 16 templates in each book, uh, and I believe the dinosaur is in set A. Yes, it is. It's definitely set A. Um, you've also got the cat in set A as well. But um, give us a call or give us a shout if, if you're unsure, okay? There we go. I like that. All right, so I've just drawn out, use that template, okay? So obviously you could use them for a normal applique, but I just thought I'd show you that they are used, you could use them for this technique as well. So I've just drawn out my dinosaur, okay? Like I said, he could be any any shape, anything you want on there. Um, I'm then gonna pop my backing fabric. So this is gonna be the fabric that's eventually gonna show through this, okay? I'm gonna pop this on top like this okay now um i'm just gonna grab my light box two seconds ladies because i want to show you how you can fussy cut this and i don't think you'll see it on camera without the light box sorry hang on two seconds I'll grab my light box here we go okay so you can see that i've got like little different sets of uh of dinosaurs on my fabric so i want my like I don't want them to be cut off when I see them through. So what I'm going to do is use the light box. I don't know if you can see this, guys. And I want to, I really want to get, where's that Stegosaurus? I like him. I want to get this, sort of move it around until I can get, can I get, there we go. I'm, I'm hoping you can see this. So I, I don't know if you can see, I've now got a, like a Stegosaurus here and a little group of dinosaurs there. I've got one sat right in his, his head there. I mean, it doesn't have to be dinosaur fabric. You could have, um, you could use any fabric at all you want behind it. Um, I just, you know, I thought while well, I'm doing a dinosaur shape, I'll use some dinosaur fabric. Okay, so I'm just, I actually might just move him down just a weeny bit, just to 
get that nice and central. And then I'm going to pin this in. Okay, so I'm going to pin the backing fabric and the applique, what I'm going to call the applique fabric behind, okay? Caroline like has uh, awesome uh, dinosaur fabric. Uh, thinking of a present for my grands, and do you have any other fabric in the shop? I haven't got any of this one left. This is a really old scrap out of my um, out of my box, um, a box of um, scraps. But we do have some dinosaur fabric. I've got some amazing Jurassic Park fabric, which has got really good T Rexes and stuff on it. Um, I will take some photos and send for you, lovely. Okay. Um, I think there's a bit of an off button. Off. There we go. Right, hopefully you could just about see that through. I know it, was, it might be a little bit difficult. I'm not going to cut this off at the moment. I will cut this off later, okay? I deliberately cut it very, very big so that I could fussy cut it. This piece was a tiny little scrap. This piece here, that was a tiny little scrap I had, okay? What we're going to do now is we're going to satin stitch all the way round those, that line there, okay? I'm going to use that line as a guide to satin stitch. So we're going to whip over to the machine I'm going to talk you through satin stitch. Okay, oh, my back is really bad again today, so you have to excuse me. I'm a proper old croc today. So, satin stitch is just a very, very close zigzag, okay? Um, so what you want to do is choose the zigzag that you off your machine. Mo almost all machines, unless it's a really, really old machine, or like a hand machine, will have a zigzag. Choose your zigzag stitch on your machine it'll fly on moth and then you want to reduce your st stitch length right down now i've got mine on in fact actually if i grab what i'm going to do is grab a scrap of fabric if i cut a little scrap off here um and show you how I'll just cut a little piece off here there we go okay so normally a zigzag i think oh wrong way sits around 1.4, that's what it comes up normally. If I just do a little piece on here, you'll be able to see it, hopefully. So the zigzag, hopefully Drew can get this, looks like, oh, let me get that thread, like that. Can you see that, guys and girls? Okay, it's quite close, it's quite far apart. So what the stitch, by reducing the stitch length, because I'm going to reduce it down to like 0.4, it means that the zigzag is much, much close together. It's no wider, but it's much, much closer together. So I reduce that down to like 0 0.4, which is on this machine is about right. I would suggest playing with the stitch before you start, okay? And just get your yours to how you want it to be. So if I know some machines actually have a satin stitch set in. So have a look at your manuals. Um, mine doesn't. You mind you have to reduce your. Can you see how much closer that is now? And gives like this solid block of colour, which all is what a satin stitch is. Can you see it's really nice and close compared to this here? Okay. So that's what I've done. I've got a normal foot on, obviously not a quarter inch, because you need to be able to go backwards and forwards and it would smash in a quarter inch. And I've reduced my stitch right down. And all I'm going to do now is using that line as a guide so with the applique fabric behind and the backing fabric on top I'm going to now I'm very lucky on my foot I've got a little line right in the center of the foot you probably can't see this right here which is what I'm going to keep the line of that that I've drawn out on okay so the zigzags is going to be equal either side of it as near as damn it you know as near as I can so I'm going to just get started. Now because the machine is very, very close together, you want to go a little bit slower and more, you know, and more careful because it's, um, it's having to work really, really hard, okay? Because it's going really, really close together. It's not a nice, big, lazy stitch and it's moving, moving well. So it sounds like I'm going really fast, but I'm really not. I've got it on like half speed. It's just the fact it's move, it's having to move. Okay, so when I get to a curve like that, I'm gonna slow it right down and stop. And I'm just gonna lift and tilt it just a weeny bit and take a few more stitches and then lift again. And you wanna go slowly round those curves, okay? To get a nice gentle curve rather than a jagged line. Three, two or three st small stitches 
needle down lift, lift and pivot okay to get myself around that curve okay like that okay and then I'm going to go around his foot <laughs> it's me thinking oh the dinosaur would be nice there's also a lot of curves in it <laughs> a lot of curves Really good. Flower says yes, this was in this was the same as the dragon class. It was. This was the reverse applique. We did the dragon in class. That's ex this is exactly the same method as this. Okay, uh, the dragon had like a million pieces, didn't it? Which uh, was oh, my, oh so much fun. <laughs> Some people it, they did look amazing when they were done, but so many pieces to that one. There we go. So I'm gonna go around. Around this one. I know it's really noisy, ladies. Sorry about that. Okay, but I need to get round most of it so I can show you what we're going to do. There we go. And then I've got a really nice tight curve here, so I'm going to have to go quite. There we go. And then round this bit. And I'm just working my way round that line. Okay? It's not very exciting to watch, I'm afraid because the machine does most of the work. I'm using a variegated thread because I just thought it'd look quite cute. It was picked up some of the colours in the applique fabric, which you'll see in a moment. Because at the moment it seems like, you know, really odd because obviously the fabric should, be, normally we'd have it on the top, wouldn't we, when we're applique -ing. So it seems really odd doing it like this. Linda Head, she said that she likes the uh, thread. Variegated, yeah, it's quite nice using the variegated, isn't it? It's uh, just gives it another, you know, if you're doing something for a, a child, it just gives it a little bit more. Sorry, I know this is really noisy, ladies, but I just need to get round at least the base of it so I can show you how to, to cut it all out. So, any questions there? Because I'm going to just whip up the tail while uh, Linda says new machine, maybe. <laughs> Um, this is, the noise isn't, uh, <laughs> yes, I absolutely, new machine, always new machine, huh? The noise isn't uh, the machine, though, any machine would be this noisy. It's because it's such a close stitch, and it's, the machine's having to work really, really hard, okay? So it is, um, it's going backwards and forwards, but really, really tight together, hence why it's noisy, sorry. So there we go, going to go up round the tail, like that. This bit and this bit again and like, like I said because it's a tight curve I'm just taking a couple of little stitches at a time one more before I can get back on the straight now once you kind of get into this technique you can layer lots of different colors so rather than just having one color you can actually do you know different pieces so um, I'll show you in a second on like like the duck or something you can actually layer up different colors so you've got more than one um, showing so. there we go just gonna go down around the tail and I've probably got just enough to show you actually because I don't want you to have to listen to this for too long <laughs> Let me just go. If I just go round over at the top, start of the his back. I'm cheating a little bit rather than pivoting. Shouldn't really do that. There we go. Right. I'm not going to go any further because there's still quite a bit to do, and you that's really noisy. Okay. But I've got enough here now to show you what I would do with this. Okay. So. You would satin stitch all the way round, okay? You would go absolutely, you, I'd, I'd have followed, carried on round here all the way round, okay? Which is all I did with the cat. I just went all the way round it, all right? So now is the ne next bit's the scary bit. So let me just move, actually, should we go all the way over so I'm away from this iron, which I'm going to need in a minute. Um, next bit's the, feels a little scary, but it's not, okay? You've just got to be brave with it. Grab yourself your seam ripper, okay? And you want to pick up just the top fabric. Don't, whatever you do, push it all the way through to your back fabric. So kind of just pick up, get your seam ripper into that top fabric, okay? 
and make little slits which feels a bit scary it's horrible don't like it <laughs> now I've got some really nice little sharp scissors here these are actually applique scissors can you see they're called duckbill scissors they've got like this funny little bit here okay um Sir Jane bought me these ages ago and they're fab however any sharp pointed small scissors I think we've got some on the website actually will will work okay you know your little stalk scissors anything that's got a really nice sharp point on it will work okay so I've started off by cutting give myself a way of getting my scissors in there okay and then I'm going to cut away just the top fabric to reveal the fabric underneath now I find if ooh, let's have that back <laughs> I find if I slide my scissors I might need to get quite close up on slide my scissors so that it's just on the edge of those that stitching can you see like that you can then cut away all the way around you can cut away that fabric okay so I'm just gonna and this is you know a job for a quiet evening don't rush this take that pin out because that's sticking in me <laughs> twice don't rush it. So I'm just cutting away any ex, the just the top fabric, by sliding my scissors along that edge, seam edge. Okay, like that, all the way up here to the top here, and then I just put a slit. Yeah, you, know, you can you can because you're cutting it away. Okay, to reveal what's underneath, you've just got to kind of manipulate the fabric until you can get your scissors in. Okay. just be careful that you're not catching the bottom fabric how are you doing drew you're getting this mm -hmm. okay so i'm working my way all the way along i'm getting rid of don't get we nearly caught the bottom fabric then getting rid of all that excess top fabric like that can you see this is now starting to reveal you will have some little bits like this can you see here Okay, I tend to find that if I give him a good brush up with my finger and then fold over kind of on the on the edge of the seam like that, you can then just trim those away quite easily. Okay, just get your little you want really tiny sharp scissors for this. So I'm gonna fold that there and get in there like that. Uh, Mary asks, is there anything you can do if you snip the stitching? Uh, if you snip, you can just, um, you can satin stitch back over it because it's so close and everything. There's no reason at all you can't just put it back into the machine and satin stitch back over that little bit. Um, I wouldn't do too much because it'll go a bit bulky. But um, to be honest, it's if you're careful, it's quite, it's quite difficult to actually cut the stitches. I know that sounds strange you'd think it'd be really easy but because of how satin stitch is so close together the fabric does cut away quite easily so like that so I'm going to go around that bit there like that and you can see that I'm just revealing the fabric underneath so um, let me try and do this bit here for you it's quite it's really hard to hold it at an angle <laughs> where you guys can see it hopefully hopefully Drew's getting this for you so we're going to go down this leg like that. It kind of, because the stitches are so close together, I don't know if you guys can see this, it almost perforates the fabric because there's so much, you know, so many holes, they're so close together. It almost, a bit like, um, you know, perforation, perforated paper, it's almost perforated the fabric like that. So it does actually cut away quite easily okay let me just cut up this bit here now i'm not going to cut it all off because obviously i'll just finish this little dinosaur anyway there we go but you can see that i'm actually revealing the fabric underneath okay so if i just do this little bit here any other questions so i just want to go around this foot mm, anybody so. okay not so I've done some incredibly simple designs here, okay? They are just one piece. But there is nothing stopping you. Say you were doing, um, right, what's, what's one that we, right, say you were doing the duck. You've all seen this one before when we've done normal, you know, like with Bonderweb fused applique. There's nothing stopping you 
drawing out each of those elements okay and you could layer up the fabric so instead of just going round once like that if I'd have had say this was the duck I'd have had the wing like that in the center I could have put a piece of say I know red fabric or yellow fabric and an orange body and under that and I would have satin stitched round there and then when you cut this one away and cut this away you end up with the two colors showing okay so that is possible I would do a one piece one first I would do something like this which is one piece to start with okay but then you can really play with this this technique all right so you carry on snipping and cutting snipping and cutting and you get rid of i'm just gonna get rid of that big piece there okay because i will finish him off camera later okay there we go so you can see it's revealing the fabric underneath okay and like I said, you would just go into these pieces here. Can you see where you've got these little fluffy bits like that? And just snip them off. Okay, just carefully. Like that. Okay, and you can get really nice and close to the stitches without cutting them. And you can get rid of all of that. Okay. You would do then do the same on the back. So on the back, I would then just... oh. That was careful. I interfaced all that bit. <laughs> Didn't that bit there? It should have been interfaced. So on the back, you would do exactly the same. You just you don't have to go quite as close to the stitches on the back, but you would just go round it like this. Okay. Make sure you're not cutting the background fabric. Okay, and just trim off all this excess. So that I'll show you on the cat. So you can see here, now I've still got a couple of little fluffy bits, but that will disappear eventually, okay? And on the back, I've just trimmed it up just a little bit to get rid of any excess, all right? You can then put some, you know, you can use it as a block in a quilt, you know, or wad it up, make it a cushion, whatever, bag front, whatever. So that's one type of reverse applique. Any questions or anything on any of that? Do you want me to go through any any of that? I can just hopefully, I mean, obviously I haven't been able to, I didn't finish the whole thing, so I can't cut it all away, but you can see that I've, I'm gonna have that fabric poking through, okay? So, any questions, ladies mm -hmm. and gents? No questions. No? Cool, okay. That's one type. I'm gonna show you the other type, okay? It's, it's not my, my favourite technique. Um, I think I prefer it when I put the fabric on top and blanket stitch in, but it does give it a, it's a definite different feel to it and a different look to it. And it's a technique that some people absolutely love. Okay, so um, satin stitch. I quite like the satin stitch actually. I don't mind doing that bit. It's quite noisy, which is why I didn't want to do too much. <laughs> but I do quite like the satin stitch. All right, so that's one thing. And like I said, you can basically use anything as a template that's got a graphic design. So just show it, you know, I mean, obviously these are some of our, um, I don't think, so like the teddy bear, the teddy bear would make quite a nice, easy one. Okay. Some of them that have got lots of pieces aren't going to work, but anything that's got like a very distinct, like the squirrel actually, it's got a very distinct outline would work really well for reverse applique. Um, uh, crab, crab would work really, really well. Okay, and there's no, it doesn't have to be a solid piece of fabric behind it either. It could be a pieced, you know, you could piece, you could do some mile a minute, you know, like there with all your scraps and everything, so it's all crazy and everything, and then put that behind and do the technique. So, have a play with it. Have a play with it. It's definitely worth trying. You might love it. It's just not my cup of tea. Okay, so other type of reverse applique, hopefully everyone's all right with that, is how we do the pie crust cushions. All right, so again, I'm just going to do a small sample for you. You would cut out the background square of whatever size you want it to be. Okay, you also then need a slightly smaller square. Okay, so again, I'm going to do a heart because it's um, it's a nice, easy graphic shape to show you. But this could be a star, it could be a circle, it could be a square, it could be any shape you want to, you know, keyhole shape. It could be dinosaur shape, 
Although there's a lot of fiddly, fiddly bits to turn that. So maybe maybe not something with too many spikes <laughs> or too many little bits. But you can basically do this with any geometric shape. OK, I'm going to use a heart. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just centre that smaller square right sides together with on the bigger square and pin it down in place. OK, Sarah, so if you're laying, would you lay? Would, yeah, would you lay over each of them and cut any away two fabrics in the same and three in the other? Yes, uh, yes, so. I kind of, yeah, I think I know what you mean. So, um, yes, when talking about this one, so say, um, say we were talking about that, we're doing it, say, a wing here, <laughs> you would cut away, um, on the, on the wing bit, you would just cut away the top, so, right, hang on, let me just fold this. Okay, so say we'd layered up the dinosaur fabric and the red. Okay, I know this is really not, this is very makeshift now, okay, but I'd satin stitched round a shape here. On the inside of that shape, I would just cut away the background fabric so the red was showing, but on this side of the fabric, I would cut away the white and the red so that the dinosaur was showing. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, I will, I'll do some more samples up and I'll, I'll do a little video and hopefully you can see what if using two colours or three colours. I'll do some, I'll do something else if, if that doesn't, um, if that didn't make sense. Hopefully it did. Oh, that just ended up on the floor. <laughs> um, shout if it doesn't. Um, yeah, and perhaps Drew and I can just do like it rather than doing a live. I'll do a little video and we'll stick it on the, the Facebook, uh, on the YouTube channel for for you to watch that bit but yeah you would cut away just that you would cut away any fabrics that you didn't want to see okay grab some more pins right back to this this version okay so you get right sides together like that and i've pinned that on top of that one i've just done a quickly drew a heart out of a piece of copy paper but again, it could be any template at all. And I'm going to line that up and draw around it. Again, this could be could be the cat or it could be one of the other ones. So there we go. Oh, let's go around that one. And all this is is just giving me a guideline for the shape. Again, you could freehand it if you wanted to. Here we go. Okay, so I've got a shape now to stitch. So back over to the sewing machine and I'm going to need to change my cotton. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly change my cotton over. And while I change my cotton over, um, I think we're going to do a challenge for the weekend. How about um, you show me your favourite applique makes? Doesn't have to be reverse applique, it can be any sort of applique at all. So whether it's needle turn or bonded applique or reverse applique whatever show me something you've made that's got an applique element okay i will put a challenge post up onto facebook and remember just tag your photos into that challenge if you send them through messengers and stuff like that they get lost and i don't necessarily see them so i'll pop a challenge post up today um, show me your favorite applique makes and I will come up with a nice prize, okay? And we'll do a free prize draw on Monday for it. Okay, so, because I do like seeing, it'll give me something to look at tomorrow when we're not on. <laughs> I do like seeing people's stuff. So I'm just gonna go back to a normal stitch on that one. Okay, let's put this in a second. Here we go. So yeah, so what are your favourite forms of applique? You know, what, what do you like? Do you like, I know our Linda, our lovely Lindy Lou, she does um, a lot of applique. She is one of her favourite things. She's really good at it as well. She's got machine blanket stitching down to a T. It's brilliant. <laughs> okay, um, just go back into this. I'm going to stitch directly on this line, okay? I Just a normal stitch length, bog standard, I've got mine on 2.5. And I'm going to stitch all the way around. Okay, a couple little tips when you get to the points, but I'll I'll stop when we get there. Okay, and go and tell you those. So so yeah, what do you like? What's your favourite applique technique, or do you not like applique? Is it not your cup of tea? Um, let me know. 
Nice. Karen is says excellent. Love, I love a pretty cat. A pretty cat. You do. Cool. Fab. Tina says she's never done it before. May have to have a go. Yeah, absolutely, lovely. Have a go. We've done quite a few different videos on different types of PK now, so um, you can always check out the YouTube channel because there's lots on there. Um, right back from when we first started doing them. So, and all I'm doing is just going round this part. Okay, just following that line, nice and gently, all the way round. Okay, when we get to the curve, just be a bit more careful. May I ask one entry per person? Um, you can post as many pictures as you like, but I only put your name in once, you know, just to be fair. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I like to see what you're doing. So if you want to post 10 different projects, brilliant. I'd, I love to see them. Um, but your name will only go in once, love. We Otherwise, you know, we might have somebody <laughs> put like 100 posts up. So, but no, um, yeah, just to play fair, we only put out people's name in once, okay? But yeah, you can post as many times as you like. So I'm just going round this one. And there's a little trick when we get to the, particularly if you're doing a heart or anything that's got an, in, an internal point, okay? When we get down to the, the point of the heart, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna stitch down to the point of the heart and then I'm gonna take one little stitch like that across. Instead of coming down to the point and pivoting straight back up, it kind of feels counterintuitive to do a flat bit there but it actually works really well of getting the fabric through, which you'll show later. So I'm going to come down to the point, one little stitch before I go back up. So I'm going to go one more on the, to the point. I'm going to do one stitch across the point and then back up this side. Okay, like that. There we go. Linda says, yes, love of bit of a plique here looks yeah. fab when I use my Liberty fabrics. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, she, she's def it's definitely, uh, definitely one of her fortes, uh, Linda's fortes is that. It's fabulous. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut out the whole of this section here, which again feels really scary. It's like, what? That can't possibly be right. But it is, I promise. Okay. So, and you're going to cut through both pieces on this. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting. Hang on, Drew. Sorry, I'm being really awkward today, aren't I, with why I'm putting stuff. <laughs> I'm making it work for it today. We're going to cut out about an eighth of an inch like that all the way around. And I'm going to cut out all this center piece. Okay. So again, I tend to use my seam ripper in like that and make a big tear so I can get my scissors in. Scissors, look, scissors in. Need to put my teeth back in as well today. And then we're going to cut out. Actually, I'm going to get my bigger scissors because those are... That'll take me forever with little scissors like that. <laughs> and you're just going to cut out about, like I said, about an eighth of an inch all the way round. Okay, so it feels a little odd. Because you're like, <laughs> you'd think this was the piece that you wanted, but it's really not. Okay. So I'm going to cut out all the way round. Like this. Sorry, Drew. I'm really making you work for it today, aren't I? Mm. There we go. Like that. And can you see? So it's about, about an eighth of an inch. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just a small seam allowance. Obviously, just be careful not to cut the actual stitches again. But you're not that close to the stitches. You're about, like I said, about an eighth of an inch. So. Um, we've had... Uh, did you see the post that Sean put up? today about the classes next week so or what, what's happening on our one o'clock lives um we're going to do some uh little fruity pin cushions so apples and pears and things so you again using up lots of scrappy bits that you've got lying around there um on monday on tuesday i'm going to do show you some really easy dishcloth patterns for crochet um because they're obviously very environmentally sound rather than j cloths you can boil wash them and stuff and use them over and over so we're gonna do some crochet dis dish cloths wednesday we've got a new uh obviously the block of the week uh which is the garden trail block and then thursday it's going to be me on thursday so we've got the zoom class happening in the afternoon and the evening well afternoon sorry morning and afternoon <laughs> but the the little lunchtime break um i'm going to be doing 
the animal panel cushions. I know Carrie requested them with the big wide border. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a really, really simple, quick and fast cushion cover if you want like presents and stuff or you just want to redecorate. And then I've got the weekend off, so I've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. So Sarah's going to be doing pineapple blocks and on Friday. I'll show you how to make the pineapple block on Friday. And on Saturday, she's going to do a journal cover. I'll show you how to do, the, do that. So I've got a packed week again next week. Right. Okay. After me having a little chatter. Cut out that, that piece there. We now want to push all of this small piece of fabric through to the back. Okay. So I find it easiest to go do this on the ironing board. And the first thing you want to do is just gently pull back this fabric and press that seam all the way around where you can. OK, now you're not going to be able to get into there at the moment, but you will will in a minute. All right. So I'm just starting by pulling that fabric back and giving it a press all the way around. I find this helps when I'm trying to push it all through. OK, so all the way round like that. Just pressing out that seam like this. OK, now we're going to push this through to the back. Oops, sorry, love. I really am making it work for it today. So we're going to push this through to the back like this. OK, and you're going to roll it in your fingers. Hang on, should I move back over? Is that better light? There we go. Guys, hopefully you can see that. Right. So you're going to push this through to the back and roll it in your fingers to get that seam right can you see that seam is now right hopefully you can see this right on the very edge here okay so i'm going to work my way around the heart sort of rolling with my fingers like that pushing that through okay like this all the way through now when we get to this bit here i would absolutely just clip into that point just a weeny bit okay it will help get it to push through so I just clip those bits. You you can clip the curves, but to be honest, I don't think it really needs it. But I'm going to push that all the way through like that. And I just use the blunt end of my scissors just to push that point right out. Okay. And by taking, you remember I said I took just one extra little stitch there to before I came back on the point. By doing that, it's giving that fabric somewhere to go. So you get a nice neat heart. Okay, so again, it looks a bit odd at the moment, but I'm just pushing that top fabric through to the back and rolling it with my fingers to get that seam nearly there, all the way. You want the seam right on the edge and you want that backing fabric to be pushed through. And if you kind of roll, if you're um, a dressmaker, you'll know what I mean by rolling the seam. So you kind of roll it in your, between your fingers and it helps it go to the back. It helps it to sit right on the top, sorry. Ooh, no, I've caught something there. Don't know what's happened there. I'll just sort that out. Hang on, give that a... There we go, got it. Give that a tug and a, and a wiggle. Got it. Okay, now give it a really good press again. Get that over. Now that's all pushed through like that. And there we go, got it. You want to give this a really good press. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around. I've just realised I didn't starch my fabrics, which is why they're acting a little bit a bit naughty. They don't want to go where they want to should be going. There we go. Right, let's get this pressed. Press it within an inch of its life, it'll it'll behave then. <laughs> I'm making this seem like hard work and it's really not. It's one of the easiest methods you can do. I'm just, it's fighting me a bit today. Here we go, all the way around. And what you've created is an aperture, which you can then use to frame whatever you like just here. Okay, so let's get that pressed out like that. Nearly there. Okay, any questions? Or anybody comments there that well, I'm just finishing this last weeny bit. Jenny said I had the same problem. I changed the needle and it worked again. Sometimes the needle is not 
property in place or just slightly off. Oh, right. Okay. And then Caroline says switch the machine off and on again. And then Are they maybe there? Are you Where's replying that? to a question, girls? Because I'm not sure uh, what that's about. Is. Yeah. Uh, Zinya? Zinya, yeah. yeah. I was pronouncing that right. Okay. Um, my, uh, yeah, she said my needle threader on my brother machine has stopped threading. Any ideas what to do? Uh, uh, enjoyed the clique, thank you both. That's right. Um, I broke mine. Mine's a manual needle threader. It's one of those those ones, you know, that you did that, and I managed to break it, so I need to get it replaced. Um, on your big brothers, um, yeah, a lot of it, the, the girls are right, the ladies are right, actually. 99% uh, of the time it's because the needle's not in quite right, or the needle's got a slight fault in the eye. So try another needle, make sure it's right up as far as it'll go, and it's, you know, the flat of the needle is towards the back. Okay, so now there's my aperture. Okay, I've done that out. Now this is where you can, whatever you put here is entirely up to you. You can just put a single piece of fabric. Okay, like that. All right. Or you can, like we've done on these ones, do a piece to pick. You know, this was just little two and a half inch squares all sewn together. So I've got a pieced piece behind, a pieced piece, <laughs> so, <laughs> a mouthful, a pieced piece behind. <laughs> um, this one was um, all stripes, so I'd done, it, done strips, pleat, a pleated heart, okay? Um, you could choose a fabric that's got a real focal point, you know, something re you know, real big pattern or something under there. Um, you, can, um, you can print onto fabric with um, freezer paper. Or we do the we actually do the June Taylor colour fast printing sheets. You can use those as well. So you could print a photo of somebody or something and then use this to make an aperture. Okay. Any shape you like as well. You would just draw that initial shape, push it all the way through and make the aperture. Okay. So I would then pin this down to hold it in place. Again, because it's an aperture, you can fussy cut as well, so you can move it around and on the fabric. And then we, we would just top stitch through all the layers to hold it down. So I'm going to show you hopefully on this one. Um, what we're going to do is we would top stitch about, again, I'm, I'm not going to show you because I've got the right colour cotton on here, but you, I'm going to top stitch all the way round like that, about that far away. So can you see on, let's see if I can, you can see on this one. Let's put this under here. Okay, can you see, so I've top stitched here all the way round through both of these layers to hold this where I want it to be. And then, look at the hair, <laughs> dog hair. Okay, and then I decorated, I did another one then a little bit further out just to, just to decorate it, okay? Just to give it a little bit more emphasis. So that's it, that's the two types of reverse applique that you can do. There are lots and lots of things to play with. It doesn't have just have, like I said, it doesn't have to be just hearts. It could be any shape you wanted it to be. Um, as long as, you, I, with this method, the second method, I wouldn't have too many sticky out bits because trying to push it through and tuck it under in, in really close curves is quite difficult. Um, if you wanted to do it, I would do the other method if you've got lots of sticky out bits but, um, in your design. But this is quite nice for any sort of aperture, okay? I quite like this one. I think it gives a really nice, clean finish to my your applique. You, it makes it more of a feature where if you put the applique, you know, if I put that heart on the top, um, actually, let me grab, uh, let me grab this one. You can see the difference, okay? They, they look completely different. When you think it's the same heart, so like this one, okay? It gives it a different depth um hang on there we go okay so that's a fused heart where i've appliqued with bond web on top of a background square and the machine a machine blanket stitched round where this one okay is a reverse appliqued heart and you can see it just kind of frames it a little bit more so you could you know if you've got if you make if you really want to make a feature of a fabric I just think it gives it a little bit more depth, maybe. I think that's the right word. Um, again, have a play with them. Have a play with the, the techniques. Ooh, I think it just broke a ruler. Oops. <laughs> have a play with the techniques and, and, you know, 
decide which one works for you. You know, the whole point of these one o'clocks, isn't it, is lots and lots of different techniques and ideas. Some you'll love, some you won't, but have a play, okay? Um, any questions or comments there? Uh, Jenny said, love both the techniques. Marilyn said, love both as well. Fab, fab. Have a have little play, have a little go at them. So, uh, like I said, with the, the first one, um, you can use any any design that you like, really. Um, as long as you can draw it out. Um, so I would start with something more simple, you know, something that's very graphic, but then you can go on and play with them once you've done it. Okay. Anything uh, else? Wendy says thank you both. That's all right. My pleasure. Um, we're back on Monday with, um, we're going to make some fruity pin cushions, like I was saying a moment ago. Um, I'll pop a challenge post up. Sorry, I was having to think about the three things I had to tell you then. My brain went blah. <laughs> I'll pop a challenge post up. So show me, show us your applique. Okay. Doesn't matter what type, um, show us your applique and we'll do a little free prize draw. I'll, I'll dig up something nice out of the shop for the, for the prize. Okay. Um, there's a couple left on the raffle. Okay. So I think there is only two left. Don't forget about the Zoom class. If you want to join us for the Zoom class, not many, uh, there's, I think there's three or four, come and bless me. No, I lie. There's three places gone. There's five left. I was doing it the wrong way round. Um, but you would need to do that by Tuesday at the very latest because I've got to get everything in the post by Tuesday at four o'clock, okay? So if you'd like to join us, don't hesitate with that one. Um, and thank you for your charity posts. We'll see you on Monday at one o'clock. Um, I'm going to go make some masks now for my Rory and Cara up in London because for everybody on public transport, they use the tube and stuff a lot. It's got to uh, got to be in masks, so I'm going to make some masks this, this afternoon and this evening. Have a lovely, lovely Sunday, um, and we'll see you Monday, guys. Okay, take care, love. Bye. <laughs>